Hi guys, it is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this gorgeous spring Monday morning, May 17th, 2017. So the little dog and I, we need to head to the lumber store to buy some sustainably harvested sustainably harvested cedar wood to build a deck here for the end times in uh, East Bumblefuck. But before uh, we join the global industrial economy, uh, exercising consumer and lifestyle choices to bring down this planet, I'm simply going to do what I try to do every morning, and that's to bring you my uh, economic meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media and to look at the ver to the business pages to look at the various ways the global industrial economy otherwise known as the new world order uh, is pulling out all the stops to bring down a planet and uh, you know, I've noticed this rant's getting a little bit redundant. Every Monday, talking about shale, U.S. shale oil. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to center my whole rant. We're going to find something else to talk about other than the, the shale uh, oil bringing down the planet. And uh, guys, I somewhat apologize for leading off the uh, this Monday rant. I've already talked about this in my clueless moron roundup rant with that goddamn planet eater in chief, Donald Trump. Uh, all sorts of stories on this, how that, that, that guy, that motherfucker, that motherfucker and his little band of uh, horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, namely Scott Pruitt, uh, the EPA uh, just uh, just reawakening the sleeping giant that this goddamn massive massive gold and copper mine up there in some gorgeous paradise called uh, Bristol Bay uh, up there in Alaska where uh, Barack Obama is part of his environmental uh, legacy put the kibosh uh, on, on, the, on this completely indefensible, totally preventable, uh, goddamn, I mean massive, massive planet eating monstrosity going on up there. Years and years of work that, that people have put into this to keep those motherfuckers out of, out of one more Garden of Eden on this planet. They just can't stop themselves. And uh, now they've got their boy in, in the White House. They, they've got their fucking billionaire real estate developer uh, in there. Uh, this completely ecocidal maniac Donald Trump and, and, and the rest of the boys up there. How many versions of this story? Good God. This is the LA Times, Los Angeles Times. Giant Alaska mine gets new chance under Trump administration. The Trump administration has given new life to a proposed gold and copper mine in Alaska that would be built at the headwaters of one of the world's largest runs of wild salmon. The Environmental Protection Agency reached a legal settlement late Thursday with the Canadian company. Now you understand this is not even an American company. This is Donald Trump protecting American jobs by handing this thing over to a Canadian company that wants to build the Pebble Mine, a vast project that would extract as much as 300 
billion dollars in precious metals while building roads, waste ponds, and other infrastructure in the remote region surrounding Alaska's Bristol Bay. The bay is home to a pristine ecosystem that includes the spawning grounds for the nations, our nations, not Canada's, most important salmon fishery, including the world's largest run of wild sockeye. The fishery, the American fishery, is worth hundreds of millions of dollars annually. Uh, even in a state in constant tension over resource development, from all offshore drilling in the Arctic to logging in the Tongass National Forest, few projects have been more controversial or reeling or revealing about Alaska than the Pebble Mine, which has been fought over for more than a decade. Yes, uh, there you go. This is Taryn Heimer, Senior Policy Analyst for the Natural Resources Defense Council. Instead of making America great, it risks America's greatest wild salmon runs. And instead of protecting the commercial fishermen, sportsmen, and Alaska natives who voted for Trump, it instead prioritizes a foreign mining company. Yes, don't. Yes, I see you. Yes, I see you. What are you doing out of your fence? What are you doing out of your fence? Oh, yes. I got up in here. Come on now. Out, 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 out. Sancho Ponza's friend is over. Uh, over visiting. Go on now. Out, out. Uh, good Lord, guys. E e you know, I could go on and on with this. Uh, whose, whose story is this? I don't even know. From The Hill, Trump's EPA revives controversial Alaska mining project. The EPA has revived a controversial proposed Alaska mining project previously blocked by the Obama administration regulators. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm really getting sick. This is, who is this? Uh, good God, I don't even, I don't even know who this is anymore. It almost doesn't matter. Reversing Obama, Trump EPA reaches deal, reaches deal with Pebble Mine Developer. <sighs> anyway, guys, I, I, I could stop this roundup right here. We are so fucked. And uh, any uh, body claiming still at this point uh, uh, that that corporate whore bitch Hillary Clinton would be the same as Donald Trump had she been elected, uh, I, got, I, I got one thing to tell you. Go on now. Go on now. Not, not even it, Hillary Clinton would, would have gone here with this. Go on, guys. Uh, dogs. What are we going to do with dogs? How many dogs? Okay, the other big story, well, the the, the second story uh, of the week, actually the first story of the week about that, that goddamn techno-utopian save-the-planet garbage, ocean garbage pack, uh, patch, vacuum cleaner. I did a whole nother rant on that. So I'm not even going to talk about it here. The third big story of the week, not dealing with oil, is this, uh, is this tunnel collapse uh, up there at the Hanford Nuclear Waste 
stop up there in Washington State. I've never really, have I ever done a full-fledged rant on that goddamn uh, disaster up there at Hanford? <clears throat> Here is the Independent. Hanford Nuclear Emergency. Workers take cover at most toxic place in America after tunnel collapse. Hundreds of workers were forced to take cover after a tunnel in a nuclear finishing plant collapsed in Washington State last week. Uh, Jesus. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy activated its emergency operations center following the collapse. Uh, some workers were reportedly told to evacuate, while others were told to shelter in place. Yeah, right. Uh, there you go. Here is repeated warnings preceded collapse of a Hanford tunnel storing deadly nuclear waste. A series of warnings by state and federal experts stretching back more than 30 years. Go on! Jesus! Preceded this week's cave-in of a tunnel in Hanford, Washington that holds lethally radioactive debris from the U.S. nuclear weapons program. This they they found reports going back to 1980. 1980 warning that this fucking tunnel could go. Here is who is this? The Atlantic. The Atlantic. What to make of the tunnel collapse at a nuclear cleanup site? This incident is only part of the slow motion deterioration of one of our country's most contaminated places. I love this. Because Tunnel collapse and nuclear waste are two phrases you don't want to see in the same sentence. The news quickly ricocheted around the national media. It's too early to give a full account of how bad this is. What's to make of the tunnel collapse at a nuclear cleanup site. Here's what to make of a tunnel collapse at a nuclear cleanup site. All right, so moving on, this is uh, just a couple of stories about uh, the shale boom. I just love this word. I've never seen this word. Signs of oil boomlet. Boomlet. In North Dakota after pipeline finished. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, more than two years after the state's unprecedented oil bonanza fizzled to a lull. North Dakota, the nation's number two oil producer behind Texas, is experiencing a sort of boomlet that has pushed daily production back above one million barrels daily. And what can we thank this to? Industry officials and others say the uptick comes from a bump in crude prices. Yeah. Regulatory certainty with the more drill friendly Trump administration and the prospect of nearly half of the state's crude now coursing through the disputed Dakota Access Pipeline, which 
could open markets abroad where top prices are typically fetched. Is there anybody who does not understand where the oil in the Dakota Access Pipeline is going to? It is going to China. This is Donald Trump, how Donald Trump is protecting American jobs and all of this. This oil is not staying in this country. It has, it does not have a fucking thing to do with American energy independence. It is fueling China's growth to become, well, already. Uh, the number one planet eater on the planet. Uh, so the $3.8 billion pipeline expected to be fully operating next month opens up the possibility for North Dakota oil to be sold on the world market where industry officials say it could earn several dollars more per barrel. Are, are, are we starting to figure this out now? Not that any clueless fucking moron uh, on Humpty Dumpty tribe voted for Donald Trump. I know there's not one person listening to this who, who voted for that motherfucker. I, I, I hope you're starting to figure things out now. Uh, now, I've already mentioned uh, several times how the Dakota Access Pipeline has already sprung its first leak. Before it was even fully operational, uh, the goddamn thing was leaking. And this is, I mentioned this one already, but it bears repeating. Uh, U.S. blocks major pipeline after 18 leaks and a 2 million gallon spill of drilling mud. Uh, I, I mean, this is, this is uh, I'm talking the energy regulators under Donald Trump oh, were, were so horrified by this. This is some goddamn gas pipeline. Thank God it wasn't an oil pipeline. Uh, and, and take a wild guess who built this pipeline that has already had 18 leaks in it. A brand new fucking pipeline. 18 leaks. Can you say Energy Access Partners, the same company that built the Dakota Access Pipeline, which is not yet fully operational, already leaking. Uh, this, this is a, an example of their fine workmanship. Da, 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 da. There was some good news. Again, I've talked about several of these stories, but they bear repeating that uh, there is some good news. Bid to revoke Obama methane rule fails in surprise U.S. Senate vote. Uh, this is where, you know, Barack Obama making these absolutely tiny little baby steps to uh, cement his uh, environmental legacy by pretending like he was going to rein in methane emissions at, at, at fracking sites. It, it, was a, it was enough of a fucking joke. It, it did about as much for methane emissions as that goddamn little, uh, that little thing up there in the, in the ocean is going to solve uh, ocean plastic. You get me? But, but even that, Donald Trump, was, was saying was too burdensome to his buddies, to his billionaire buddies, uh, th these fucking frackers. And, and, and he was trying to erase those. And three senators, John McCain and a couple of others, uh, actually said, you have gone too far, you motherfucker. And they voted with the uh, Democrats uh, you know, to keep in Obama's laughably small uh, rules. 
And so the vote went 51 to 49, as I was saying on Thursday, I hope the bigger picture here is that this is a sign that more and more Republicans have had enough of Donald fucking Trump. It is time for that motherfucker to go. We need a few more Republicans to get on board with people with John McCain and any other fucking Republican uh, congressman with a brain, if there is such a thing, and we need to impeach that motherfucker. He needs to go. All right. Next, let's see what's going on with the French oil company Total. Total's plans for Brazil's new oil frontier snagged on Amazon coral reef. I've mentioned this uh, before. Uh, so the, the goddamn French are out there. Uh, offshore uh, of, of Brazil out there in the goddamn ocean where they hope to suck up as many as 14 billion barrels of petroleum more than the entire proven reserves of Mexico. But there's one little problem. There's this pesky coral reef in the way. And we will we'll, we'll see how long that, that little pesky little inconvenient coral reef is going to be in the way uh, of those motherfuckers. Uh, guys, I need to do a whole study on, a whole rant on this uh, Silk Road, this China uh, just completely uh, destroying whatever is left of the American Empire. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole nother rant. I'll, I'm just going to touch, I'm just going to brush up against it. Here is China, China eyes U.S. energy after inking $20 billion in deals. China is setting its sights on U.S. energy as a growing reliance on imports forces it to look beyond traditional suppliers, according to the head of the country's biggest oil and gas company, as China National Petroleum Corporation will import more crude oil and natural gas from the U.S. And this is... Um, I'll, I'll, anyway, I'll get back to this Silk Road thing maybe in a future end. The energy giant will sign $20 billion in deals. This is one of these planet eaters, Mr. Wang, Mr. Wang from China, quote, the U.S. has very rich oil and gas resources in China and as China pursues a diversification of its crude oil supply, the U.S. will, of course, be one of our sources. This is how Donald Trump is protecting American jobs and the American empire. And next to that story from CNBC News, China's Sinopec expects to double foreign invest investment to more than $30 billion. This is, a, this is another one of these planet eaters. China's giant state-owned oil and gas firm Sinopec or Sinopec is planning to splash big money, $30 billion or more, into a continued expansion abroad to shore up access to energy resources as Beijing touts its foreign policy 
initiative. Here, as long as we're over there in China, how about this? Nepal. Nepal in talks with China to build an $8 billion cross-border rail link. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, don't, 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 even, don't even get me going. Let's go from the Himalayan mountains getting ready to be attacked by this planet-eating railroad. Now that all the glaciers are melting, they can start building railroads from the melting glaciers in the Himalayas. Let's go up there to the Arctic. At Arctic Council meeting, hidden tensions, hidden tensions over regions, resources. Hidden tensions, my ass. They're all over the fucking mainstream media. <clears throat> For anybody who does not understand oil wars ramping up on planet Earth. <clears throat> As foreign ministers from countries with territory in the far north celebrated an agreement on fighting climate change in the Arctic this week. One topic seethed below the surface, the growing competition for Arctic resources and sea lanes as the ice melts. Russia, one of eight members of the Arctic Council, which includes the United States, Canada, and the Nordic countries, has been pouring money and missiles into the Arctic, as well as reopening and building bases there. This is bringing Russia's Arctic military presence to the highest level since the 1991 fall of the Soviet Union. This was Republican Senator Dan Sullivan from Alaska who hosted Thursday's meeting uh, on a, uh, quote, the Russians are certainly making a play in the Arctic that is doing anything but lowering tensions, said Sullivan. Ba, 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 from the Arctic to New England. New England confronts little-known messy legacy of mining. Think of New England industry and mills and, and mills, farms and lobsters come to mind, but the region also has a sometimes messy legacy of mining and the bill is due. Companies that once pursued copper, iron, and other ores have abandoned half a million mines nationwide and left the cleanup to taxpayers. Thanks to decades of lax regulation, though the vast majority of such hard rock mines are in the West, taxpayers are on the hook for more than $80 million in cleanup at just two mines in Maine and, and Vermont. Uh, moving on, let's see, what is Monsanto up to? According to EcoWatch, what are our buddies at Monsanto up to? Monsanto hires internet trolls to cover up Roundup's cancer risks. No shit. So internet trolls paid for by Monsanto have been scouring the internet to hide the ugly truth about the herbicide Roundup and the dangers of glyphosate. While the chemical giant worked 
with government regulators to declare their product safe to use, even though it probably causes cancer. According to court documents, Monsanto hired third parties to search out negative comments about their products and counter them with pseudoscientific research commissioned by the company itself. No shit. So long. La -ta -ta. A few more. Here we go. Nigerian economy glimpses dim light at end of tunnel. Here we go. Here is, as long as we're over there in Sub-Saharan Africa, Zambia's poorest farmers risk becoming squatters on their own land, according to UN expert. Zambia's small farmers could be made squatters on their own land if on land as the country opens up to farming multinational corporations in an effort to boost its economy, said a United Nations expert. Two more. I've been talking about a, a couple of stories about how the Philippines environment minister was sacked last week because she actually tried to shut down a couple of these planet eating mines. Well, let's hear what the Philippines finance minister has to say all about all this. Philippines finance minister says mining should be encouraged, not suppressed. Extractive industries like mining should be promoted, not curbed, the Philippines finance minister said on Thursday, promising mining investors there will be, there will be no more arbitrary suspensions of operations. Mm. The government has been taking a less confrontational stance toward mining after the removal of its environment minister who had ordered the closure of some of these mines. Oh. Quoting this uh, Planet Eater Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez, quote, Mines are necessary to help our economy develop, to bring the revenues that government needs, and to create opportunities for the communities that host these industries. Yeah, like the opportunity to get cancer, the opportunity for their drinking water to be poisoned, the opportunity to have a landslide bury their house, the opportunity, anyway, I think we know it, but never let it be said that Ham on Little Tail doesn't wrap up his economic meltdown Roundup Ranch with a warm and fuzzy little story. Isn't this nice, critically endangered sea turtle released into the wild after being caught in fishing line. A critically endangered sea turtle that had been caught in a Louisiana fisherman's line is now being released back into the wild following months of grueling rehabilitation. So now the critically endangered sea turtle in the Gulf of Mexico can go right back to getting tangled up in another fucking fishing line or, or shrimp net or underwater oil rig or, or whatever to join the thousands of 
other dead sea turtles that were not rescued. Anyway, guys, I got to wrap up this uh, economic meltdown roundup rant because there is a big pile of sustainably harvested, sustainably harvested cedar boards waiting for me at the lumber yard. And I need to, uh, I guess, go find some big ass gas sucking truck. So it's about a hundred miles, so a 200 mile round trip to bring some sustainably harvested cedar boards that came on an 18 wheeler to New Mexico from Oregon. But at least I've talked the, uh, the eco-Nazi owner of the house not to buy Redwood, which was the original plan. Bye, guys.